Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor, so let's jump in. This book has flipped the script when it comes to positive psychology. Most people chase success in an attempt to find happiness, but in this book, Sean teaches us that this common strategy is actually backwards. In the real world, it is happiness that fuels success. So let's take a look at the seven principles outlined in this book. Principle number one, the happiness advantage. People who put their heads down and wait for work to bring eventual happiness put themselves at a huge disadvantage, while those who capitalize on positivity every chance they get come out ahead. This quote demonstrates the idea that happiness is not a byproduct of success. It is success which is the byproduct of happiness. Hence the name of this book and the name of this first principle which is the happiness advantage. By focusing on raising your levels of happiness, you're putting yourself at an advantage and you're more likely to achieve success. But why is this? Let's take a look at another quote. It turns out that our brains are literally hardwired to perform at their best, not when they're negative or even neutral, but when they are positive. When we are happy, our brains are flooded with dopamine and serotonin. These neurotransmitters not only make us feel good, they also crank up our brain's ability to learn. And this is all well and good, but how can we raise our levels of happiness? Well, Sean has answers for this too. Meditate. Neuroscientists have found that monks who spend years meditating actually grow their left prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain most responsible for feeling happy. Find something to look forward to. Even just thinking about something that you're looking forward to has a positive effect on your brain. Commit conscious acts of kindness. People who are altruistic, which means that they are selflessly concerned for the well-being of other people, are found to have lower levels of depression and tend to see life as more meaningful. Infuse positivity into your surroundings. Don't get home every day and stick on the television to watch the news which is going to focus mainly on all the bad things which happen in the world. Try to surround yourself with positivity. Exercise. This improves our work performance by boosting our mood and fueling our motivation. Spend money, but not on stuff. Buying material things makes us feel good, but not for very long. So spend your money on experiences with your friends and family instead. And finally, Exercise as signature strength. This is something which you are good at, which is also part of your character. For example, you might be a really strong listener, so exercising this strength will bring happiness to your life. Principle number two, the fulcrum and the lever. Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. This quote is from the ancient Greek mathematician and physicist Archimedes. For our purposes, the lever is the potential power and possibility we believe we have and the fulcrum is the mindset with which we generate the power to change. By changing our mindset, which would move the fulcrum in our analogy, we find it easier to unlock the potential power that we have. This idea tells us that by changing your mindset, you change what is possible. Principle number three, the Tetris effect. You've seen the game Tetris, right? Where colored shapes fall down and you've got to fit them all together. Well, studies have actually shown that people who play Tetris for hours and hours start to fit shapes together in the real world too. They might be walking down a supermarket aisle and find themselves thinking about arranging the boxes on the shelf. This is called the Tetris effect. It is when you devote so much time and energy into an activity that it begins to pattern your thoughts. Therefore, you want to train your mind to see positive patterns in the world so that you can make the most of the opportunities. When I finish shower in the morning, before I dry myself, I think of three things that I'm grateful for. This is one way to train your brain into positive thought patterns. Principle number four, falling up. Nobody goes through life without a setback somewhere along the line, but you have a choice whether to fall down or to fall up. Falling down is a negative response to a setback, where you see the worst in the situation and find yourself helpless. Falling up, on the other hand, is where you see the good in the situation, you look for the opportunity hidden in the setback. Imagine that your best buddy borrows your car and is involved in a collision. Your car now has a massive dent in the side. This is a setback, no question about it, but you now have a choice. Do you become angry at your unfortunate friend because your car is now dented, or do you become thankful that nobody was seriously hurt? So, let's all make the choice to fall upwards. Principle number five, the Zorro Circle. Hopefully you'll remember the scene in the film Zorro when the master is teaching Zorro how to sword fight by drawing a small circle in the dirt and only allowing Zorro to fight within this circle. Only once Zorro has fully mastered fighting within this small circle can he proceed to greater challenges. By starting small and building up gradually, we can end up achieving great things. This is because having small, manageable goals 
creates a sense of control and feeling control of your life improves all aspects of it. Principle number six, the 20 second rule. Sean, the author of the book, wanted to spend more time practicing the guitar which he kept in his closet. It only took 20 seconds to get the guitar from the closet, but even this small effort had a big impact on whether or not Sean would grab the guitar and start practicing. Finding the willpower to do things is hard, and finding the willpower to avoid doing certain things can be even harder. So create obstacles to make it easier to stop with your bad habits and remove obstacles to make it easier to develop good habits. For example, have your gym bag packed and ready to go so that it is one less obstacle in your way. And the last one, principle seven, social investment. Our level of sociability has a big impact on our mood, our health and our success. Strong social connections can even keep away depression and increase your life expectancy. So invest plenty of time and effort into your colleagues, your friends and your family. And that's all from me guys. I hope you found this interesting. I'll leave links below so you can find out more about the book and the author. I'll also leave the link to Sean Aker's TED Talk, which has got millions of views and I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.